watching KTAL News Now. Here's Brittany Dufran with your midday news break. Happy Friday, I'm Brittany Dufran. Your midday news break starts right now. And we're starting with our top story this afternoon. Thursday was a difficult day of testimony in the Taylor Parker capital murder trial. The sentencing phase continues to unfold new evidence day by day. And according to our courtroom reporters, the jury learned exactly how baby Braxlin died, even showing images that caused some in the courtroom to get emotional and even remove themselves. Parker was convicted earlier this month of killing Reagan Hancock and kidnapping her unborn baby. The jury now has to determine whether Parker gets life in prison or the death penalty. The trial resumes Monday morning. And you can find continuing coverage on our website, ktalnews.com. You can also join us there later today at 4 p.m. for a live breakdown of all the details from this week. Now let's look over to what's happening in Webster Parish. That's right, the downtown Minden water tower is being drained for maintenance and repairs. Part of First Street is closed while the work is being done. It's a small section between First Methodist Church and First Baptist Church of Minden. The entire project is expected to take about three months. Now here is a safety matters topic for you that's been causing some concern for business owners. You may remember the massive fire that burned down a historic building on Texas Street last month. Well, neighboring businesses are concerned that nothing is being done about it. They say not only is it a safety hazard, but it's also an eyesore. Judge Marcus Hunter, the property owner, says he was devastated when he saw his building caught into flames and fire last month. He said he had plans for the building, big plans actually, to turn it into a housing unit. If you ask me I, saw, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think if you ask any person to a man, woman, or child about that piece of property and what they do with it, everybody would have a vision. I had a vision, and somebody robbed me of that vision. And I need to know who that is. And in due time, prayerfully, I'll find that out. Hunter says he's been trying to get in touch with the city and is unsure if they're moving forward with the demolition. We're continuing to follow this story and we'll provide you with the latest details on KTALnews.com, so stick with us. And NBC6 is your local election headquarters. Now we're less than two weeks away from midterm elections. Seems like it's just around the corner now. Let's do a quick preview looking at some of the candidates running for Shreveport Mayor. Actually, on October 20th, we held our own mayoral forum with four of the 10 candidates. You can watch it all on our website, ktalnews.com. Also there, you can find candidate profiles and more about what's on your ballot so you can stay informed on election day, which don't forget is November 8th. All right, let's jump into your question of the day. Gonna give you a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. Let's jump right into it. All right, so today's question of the day is who are you voting for in Shreveport in the Shreveport mayoral election? So I do know that we only have four of the 10 candidates here as we can see that, uh, but this is due to a limited spacing on our screen. We will continue to at random select a few candidates so that you can continue to make sure your voice is heard. Don't go anywhere. More to come on your midday news break right here. Also, don't forget to join us later today at 4 p.m. for a live breakdown of what's unfolded in that courtroom regarding the Taylor Parker capital murder trial, sentencing trial, that is. And so you can also watch it on our Facebook as well. So stay tuned and stick with us. Don't go anywhere. Watching KTAL News Now. Here's Brittany Dufran with your midday news break. 
Welcome back on this happy Friday. We have more on your midday news break right here. And we're starting with the topic that's topping consumer news today. The nation's airlines are under intense pressure to improve their performance over the holidays. This comes after a rough summer travel season about that passengers were complaining and those complaints were soaring. NBC's Tom Castello brings us the full report. From the cockpit to the control tower to the traveling public, no one wants a repeat of this past summer's travel meltdowns. We're very anxious. We just want to get home. Uh, it has been the worst experience ever. New data from the DOT shows the level of passenger frustration hit a boiling point. In August, complaints up 6% over July, up an eye-popping 320% over pre-pandemic levels, even with 15% fewer flights than 2019. 22% of all flights delayed, 2.5% canceled in August, with the Biden administration putting the pressure on the airlines now to do better, with Thanksgiving just four weeks away. I think it'll be uh, an improvement from uh, the, the toughest moments we saw over the summer, but not perfect. Some airlines say they're still recovering and staffing up. We're nearly staffed. We are just, uh, you know, short pilots to fly all of our aircraft. This holiday season, passenger volume expected to approach 2019 levels despite sky-high inflation. Our planes have been basically 90% full. I think travel demand for airlines is permanently higher. It's at a higher level. To ensure your travel goes as smoothly as possible, travel pros recommend booking now. Seek the earliest flight of the day and fly direct to avoid connections. All right, thanks, Tom. And earlier this week, we told you about a woman who was in court facing a charge of electioneering. Then in a separate case, a man on the ballot in Caddo Parish was also arrested for the same thing. Here's a little breakdown of the rules outside polling locations. With early voting underway, there are certain do's and don'ts voters must be aware of. For starters, a candidate is not allowed to stand 600 feet from the polling location, promoting their campaign by signage, clothing, or word of mouth. If you're a part of the campaign and you would like to exercise your right to vote, you are not permitted to wear promotional clothing while you're doing so. Anyone can report these prohibited actions, also known as electioneering. And NBC6 is your local election headquarters. Now we're less than two weeks away from the midterm elections. So we want to do a little preview looking at some of the candidates running for Shreveport mayor. On October 20th, we also held our own mayoral forum with four out of the 10 candidates. You can watch it all on our website, ktalnews.com. Also there, you can find candidate profiles and more about all the candidates so you can stay informed on election day. Let's jump into our question of the day. All right, giving you a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. Jumping into today's question of the day, who are you voting for in, Sh in the Shreveport mayoral election? And I understand we only have four of the 10 here. As we continue to get closer to election day, we will at random add more candidates here. That's all for today. Hope you have a spectacular and safe Halloween weekend. See ya.